I'm coming to you from our chapel here at St. Cecilia's, Our Lady of Fatima. And it's been a very special year for us as we continue with our campaign and the good work that we do for our students and for our families. Just wanted to wish all of you a great Holy Week, a blessed Holy Week and Easter. And just say a few words about these sacred days that we're entering upon. So the next three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they're called the Sacred Triduum or the Sacred Three Days. And tomorrow evening at the Mass of the Lord's Supper, we will celebrate three particular gifts that our Lord shared with us. The first is the gift of His body and blood, the gift of the Eucharist. And as He celebrated His Passover, we recall from the Old Testament how the blood of the Lamb that was put on the doorposts of the Jewish people, the angel of death passed over their homes so that they would be saved from death. And it is in our time that we receive our Lord in His precious body and blood that He covers us to and saves us from the angel of death. The roasted flesh of the Jewish people that they took to consume and took with them on the journey through the desert is food for their journey. And so we receive the precious blood and body of our Lord, uh, the sacred lamb, as food for the journey across the desert and into the promised land one day of eternal life. There's also the gift of the priesthood that was instituted on the night of the Passover by our Lord. Uh, and the third thing that he gave us was the mandate or the mandatu, sometimes Thursday is called Monday Thursday, has to do with the mandate that the Lord gave us and gave his apostles as he washed their feet to love one another, not as we would choose to do so, but to love one another as he has done so. So that's Holy Thursday. Following that, he would go into the agony in the garden where he would offer that great prayer, Father, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but yours be done. And then on Friday, we know he went through his, his trial and also through his torture, through his passion and death. We call it Good Friday. And it's an interesting name for it because the worst thing that could have happened, happened. Uh, through our sins and through the choices of the people of his time, he was put to death. But because of that death also, he saved us. He reconciled us to our Father. And so we call the day good, even though something terrible happened. It, it brought about the greatest thing for us. And so we reverence really the good of it. We do that in the liturgy particularly by not only receiving Christ in his body, but also by venerating the cross. And then on Holy Saturday, as we reflect upon him being in the tomb, we go into the Easter vigil on Saturday night. It begins with the, what's called the ritual or the service of light. And that's where we light the Easter fire and we welcome uh, into our darkened world the Lord himself who gives each of us our light. He comes into our personal darkness and the darkness of our world to give us light and to give us hope. You know, these events and Christ's resurrection happened long ago, but they did not stay there. Through the church's teaching, we know that these events transmit grace over time and they, trans they transmit the life of Christ over time. It does so in the liturgy. We don't simply recall the events of the past or go back and imagine how it might have been, even though we might do that, and that may be helpful for our prayer. But what we're celebrating is that Christ is with us now in the sacred liturgy and in our sacred assembly. We celebrate really that we have been saved. We celebrate our salvation, and we celebrate the good of it, and we celebrate that we are an Easter people. And as an Easter people, our song is Alleluia. God bless you and your families. I wish you a holy and happy uh, Holy Week and also Easter.